You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Not exactly the week the Tigers were looking for in the Lone Star State. We'll recap games against North Texas and SMU. Sit down with Jonathan Pierre and look ahead to Charlotte. And finally, the rematch we've all been waiting for against FAU. It's the Petty Hardaway Show. Let's go. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser of Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone, and supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. The longest road trip of the year was the longest road trip of the year. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Wolosian. And I'm Matt Field. Let's check out the highlights against North Texas at SMU. First stop of the week for the Tigers in Denton for their first conference matchup with North Texas. The Mean Green shot the lights out early and often. Christian Moore gets the friendly home roll. That puts North Texas up 18 to four. David Jones is our defensive player of the week. He had two steals and 16 rebounds in this one. This theft leads to a Javon Quitterly layup. Tigers battling back 24-17, and they erase the lead completely. Later in the first, Nick Jordan from downtown. Book it, gives Memphis a one point lead. But Jason Edwards was a man on a mission. Memphis tried closing the gap in the second half. He was having none of it. Knocks down a triple. He's not done. Later in the half, another long ball. Bottoms. 30 for him in the game. Tigers fall to start the week. 76-66. Now to Moody Coliseum for a Sunday matchup with SMU. Naquan Tomlin was balling early. Takes his man off the dribble. Too strong. Get off me. Who plus the harm. 17 for Tomlin in the game. Jones is also our outstanding performer of the week, trying to put the team on his back in the first half with the Tigers down big. Knocks down this triple. Game high 33 for him, but not nearly enough. Final seconds of the half. Ricardo right at the buzzer on target as the Tigers lose to the Mustangs, 106-79. Coach, since we just got off that longest road trip in a long time, let's talk about how you plan to go on the road. We've already talked about the hotels. We thank you. They're terrific. Yeah. But when does all the planning begin? Take us to the summer and you're looking over your schedule. Yeah, well, it starts with uh, Garrett Kelly, the, the Dobo, Director of Basketball Operations. We talk about hotels, practice times, uh, trying to stay with a, <clears throat> a familiar schedule that we've done over the years since I've been here. And uh, by the time the, the games come around, we're already formatted on what day we're leaving, what time the plane is leaving, the bus from the practice facility to the airport, the bus picking us up at the airport, whether we're going right to the arena or practice facility or to the hotel and then to the arena. And uh, that's been the format. And then when you get there, it's more about bonding. It's, it's more focused because you don't have as many distractions on the road. And it's more about bonding and, and just and coming together to, uh, to get a road win. Has the routine changed at all over your six years? Have you found things that you like and other things you don't like that you switched up? No, I haven't switched anything up. I'm, I'm the guy that's gonna keep everything the same. Uh, same hotel if we can, especially if we won the year before, but it's usually the same hotel. Can, can I interject here? If we win, we're definitely staying. <laughs> definitely. He's superstitious. Yeah, I am. Uh, that's the only thing I'll change, maybe. But for the most part, the, uh, the meals, the, the same hotel, the practice times vary depending on if the women have a game and if their practices are in the arena. Uh, and that's really about it. Everything else is still the same. How do you pick the high school gyms that you might shoot at? You're going to go to shoot around on the floor of the opposition, but a lot of times you go to a separate place. How does that all work? Well, we make calls. It might be a local college outside of the college that we're playing, you know, especially in the conference tournament uh, where you have to go and, and do a shoot around and maybe at a, a sports facility or whatever. And that comes about because you just want privacy. You don't want to be seen. You want to have your private time because you never know how many eyes are looking when you go into the main arena. 
You have a wild story in that vein. Anything that you thought was gonna go smooth over the years and then it went south at the last second, anything in that? Not really. I, I think the, one of the craziest things is at UAB, we either had a nine o'clock, I think it was UAB, a nine o'clock shoot around or uh, go to the practice facility. It might've been at Tulane or UAB. We've never had that before. And it was an early game the next day. So they wanted us to stay up really late, go to bed late, get back and then have an early game. Oh, the next 9 p.m. Day. It was 9 p.m. practice. Oh my God. Instead of our usual six, 6 p.m. Way to take your legs out for sure. How do you plan the meals? Cause I think the Tigers eat pretty good on the road. Well, that's Darby Rich's area. We usually talk about uh, give the guys a little bit of slack and not be so strict, kind of keep them uh, happy so they don't have to do Uber Eats because if they don't like the meal, they're going to do Uber Eats. <laughs> but usually it's Darby Rich and I putting our brains together to talk about something that's going to fuel them for the next day. Talk about mindset on the road because obviously you know you're going into hostile environments where the crowd is going to be against you. What are the main things you're keying your, your guys in on to make sure they're ready for that? Yeah, just locked in on, you know, the small things, you know, the things that you might take for granted. Like, you know, winning the free throw game, that's not really small, but that's, that's something that we talk about. Winning the, the rebound game, and then also getting the crowd out of the game early. That's something that we really try to focus on, put a lot of emphasis on taking it. Because everywhere we go, they have these t-shirts out everywhere we go, and it's a sold out arena, usually. And we know that it's gonna be the other team's best, biggest game, one of their biggest games. So we try to get locked in on knocking that crowd out of the game early. No, that is true. We lead the country in t-shirt games when we arrive. This is crazy this year. I, I want to ask you about the venues themselves, though. Where do you think is the toughest, as a coach now, the toughest place you've had to play? And what is your favorite on-the-road venue to play? Yeah, well, there's the both, both in one, which is the team that left us to go to the Big 12, and that was Houston. Yeah. I enjoyed going to Houston, but it was the worst place to play because of the environment. The environment was always rowdy, that environment. This year, I could say Tulane. You know, rowdy environment and that I love I love to play there. Is it different? We've talked a lot about your younger teams in the past and now older teams this year. How much different is it going on the road with more experienced teams? Yeah, it's 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 easier because the guys, the older teams have already experienced a lot of big games. The younger guys know. They don't know what to expect. They think it's just about showing up. And uh, that's the difference. The older guys just know they've been down that road before. They can talk to each other about what the experiences have been and then go into the game with a common goal and just understand what it's going to be. Then the logistics with practices and then at night, you're giving them a curfew, but you always have meetings and cutting up the film. How does all of that work when you're away from here? Yeah, video guy Jordan Verholst and I get together and talk about what we're going to kind of chop up the, off, the good offensive plays for them, bad offensive plays for them, and then good defense, bad defense for them and us because we have to watch ourselves as well. And if we've already played that team one time before, we'll use those clips from the game that we played them before to watch to get ready for the next game. Is there enter any better experience for a team than going on the road in a hostile environment, getting a win and hopping on the plane back? There's no better feeling, honestly, than to go on the road and being road warriors, getting a win, getting on the bus, eating a great meal, riding to the airport, knowing that you had took care, taken care of business. And then we've got the tournament coming up in Fort Worth. That's gotta be a hard one to plan for. Yeah, but you know it's coming. You know you know that you, you, you really have to pack for the week, not one day, not one game, and know that you're gonna be there for the championship game. But it's actually fun because all the teams are on one property, everybody's playing, you get a chance to get into that environment. It reminds you of the NCAA, and it's a great experience. From one Division II offer coming out of high school to Memphis, we'll detail Jonathan Pierre's journey. Coming up next. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Welcome back to The Penny Hardaway Show. Jonathan Pierre was not much of a collegiate prospect while he was playing high school ball, but a growth spurt and a great showing at a local tournament changed everything for him. And now he's landed at Memphis. Pierre hails from the Miami Fort Lauderdale area. Basketball was always in the picture growing up, but he did play other sports, some more interesting than others. A little bit of baseball, didn't really like it. Soccer, a little bit of that. Did a little bit of kung fu, didn't like that. So definitely, definitely all basketball. But those sports helped me in like other ways, like, you know, using your hands. I mean, using your feet instead of your hands. 
So I definitely learned to pick up a couple of tricks playing those type of sports. I'm curious about Kung Fu in particular. Does anything with that translate to basketball? Uh, in terms of mindset, yeah. Like you don't want to get punked. You always want to have that dog mindset coming to the, but coming into the game, like it's not something like, you know, when people are anxious, like they start to mess up a little bit. It was teaching me how to flow and how to be balanced with myself and just staying at a steady pace, not too high or too low. So that's really on a mentality standpoint. Pierre had big aspirations in basketball, but didn't have the body for it for most of his high school career. He was 5'10 as a sophomore and 6'2 as a junior. Then everything changed rapidly. What is the experience of hitting a five inch growth spurt in one month? Yeah, uh, super painful. Um, didn't really understand my body. I'm still a guard, so all my skill sets, like I didn't know how to set screens and stuff like that. So I was definitely adjusting from that time period. It was so painful some days, like I couldn't really walk. So I would like crawl to go brush my teeth. But it was just, like literally so painful every step. You just mad tendonitis and all those other things that came with growing. So uh, definitely a very painful experience in that month. A lot of time and all. I bet. A lot of time. But even at 6'7", colleges weren't exactly lining up to recruit Pierre, but he caught his big break at a local tournament his senior year. The Big A tournament, yes. That changed your life? That changed my life right there. That's all, that's the top eight teams in Broward County. Everybody went there and, uh, not everybody, but the top Broward schools went there. We were fortunate to get there. And we're about to play um, one of the number one school in the state. And he's just sitting there, I was recruiting another player from that team. And I happened to have one of my best games ever, like in my high school career. He saw that, he was like, oh, who is this kid? And after that, the next team, he brought the entire staff to see and then they came to the next two games and it was just a streak 25 26 28 like, oh no this kid is ours now offered me and then that was that was all she wrote for that one he is a man named jordan fee the associate head coach at nova southeastern a d2 powerhouse in pierre's backyard it was the only school that offered him out of high school but he didn't walk in as a star so i didn't really play that much my freshman year but i worked and going late into my um lane like to the postseason when we had uh the regional finals going into the elite eight i got like 20 minutes and i started stacking and then um that was it for my freshman year we ended up going 32 and one we lost one game that year and that was in the elite eight so that was fun like just cultivating winning winning is fun everybody loves to win obviously the sharks enjoyed winning so much they decided that's all they were gonna do pierre's sophomore season they went 36 and 0 capped off with the first national championship in program history and Pierre played a big part in it. What's the experience when the buzzer sounds in that national championship game and you guys finish off a perfect season? I cried because um, me, Kobe, RJ, we were like, we probably knew we weren't coming back because it was like, we were like, we, we did what we needed to do here. Now it's time to move on. So like, I knew I wasn't coming back and we knew we weren't coming back and we knew we just did something big and, we, and not to mention it, it's in my hometown. So the fact that I was, bringing to, I was able to bring a national championship to my hometown, like it was, it was, it was special. Like I couldn't even describe the feeling, like all the hard work, all the late nights, early mornings, all the, all the crying, the battles between teammates and just to hold a banner like that and then call yourself a national championship is definitely a feeling that carry on from years. Even when you have your own kids, you'll always come back to that gym and like, I did that. So definitely something that's gonna live on for generations. Pierre threw his name in the transfer portal and was a very popular man right away, but he had an inkling on where he wanted to end up. It was, it was insane, but I had a feeling that I wanted to play for Coach Penny. And um, I think this was the, this was the ultimately the right move, not to mention to learn from a Hall of Famer, first ballet Hall of Famer, that literally kind of resembles my game a little bit in terms of the big guard status. And I was like, why not just come learn from him and grow? Do you feel like you have something to prove coming from a D2 school? I think people just overlook me because it's Division Two, but I think Division Two is like it's very talented. A lot of D ones drop down to there, and it's just something to prove for myself, and not even just for myself, for the people that invested into me. That when I didn't believe in myself, because I didn't think I was gonna get this far in my basketball career I'm here, so I'm doing it. A, it's a lot deeper than me. Doing it for my family, doing it for the kids that might have to take an extra route because I didn't get the Division One offers out of high school to come straight to a Division One my freshman year. So just showing that if you stay committed, you stay dedicated to the grind, no matter what path you take, you could always end up at the top. Were there any doubts throughout the year that you belonged here? I would say there were doubts. I wasn't playing at first. I was like, well, I had all these offers, like why did I not choose something else? But I had to, I had to have a talk with Penny and I haven't really communicated with him like that throughout the season. 
So we had a talk about like, I would say like a week ago from now. And it's important to have that player coach relationship. Super, super important. When I had that talk with him, it became relevant of what I needed to do. And I was very naive of that. And when we talked about it and everything started to click, just being consistent in the gym, practice, film, and I started to get opportunities. I started to capitalize on it. So definitely in terms of that, for sure. I think you use the term attitude adjustment to describe what's happened with you and how that's clicked. Walk us through that. What did that conversation lead to? What did it turn on in your mind? The transfer portal, it can be very wild. You're getting multiple guys from different walks of life, from different schools, leading scores, you know, schools from that like nature. And basically when there's chaos, you can't add on to it. And that was something I was doing with my attitude. I'm like, I'm not playing, well, I don't care. But I was like, I have to be um, positive because good things happen to good people. It's a full circle. So when I switch my attitude towards that, cheering on my teammates, being vocal, not only my play rise, everybody else play rise because you just gotta be a positive, positive nature. And that attitude adjustment literally just flipped the entire script within a week. So. One thing that's very obvious, if you watch Pierre on the court or interact with him off of it, he tries to have fun in everything he does. I'm a joyful person, always have high energy. I always feel like you have to live life, like you gotta be serious in moments, but you gotta enjoy life. And I think when I came here, I kind of forgot what enjoying life means. And I kind of took away from my play. You gotta enjoy life, you gotta have fun. You gotta be just ecstatic about everything. And everything's an opportunity. Like I always tell like people, like I'm not living in the real world. People have bills to pay. Um, people are really going through real life struggles and I'm able here to play basketball for a division one program under Penny Hardaway in Memphis playing on scholarship. Why would I not be happy? Why would I take away from the team and I'm able to have all these blessings around me? So when I started looking at the bigger picture and looking at that, then that's like, why can I not? Like, why would I not be happy? Why would I not dance when I see a camera right there? I'm gonna go crazy. So something about that just really makes me happy. First time conference matchup with Charlotte and the game we've been waiting for since last March against FAU. We'll preview both of them coming up next. You're watching the Penny Hardaway Show presented by Cook's Pest Control. Let's take a look at the AutoZone road ahead. Memphis has not played Charlotte in I don't know how long since it was the old CUSA at the beginning. They have a darn good team though. Yeah, well coached, didn't know much about them. Heard a lot about them last year playing in the Conference USA, and I, I didn't see a game. But watching them play this year, they're very detail-oriented, they're sharp, and they're a smart team, and they play hard. What else needs to be said? Revenge game against FAU after the tournament last year. They're new to the conference this year. It's what comes to mind. Yeah, they, they were um, pretty rude to us in the, in the NCAA tournament from the beginning to the end, and then beat us. We had to leave with one point with 10 seconds to go with the ball and then bring it home. Looking forward to that game. Is that the one? Be honest here, that you circled before the season began is here we go. If there was one I would circle, that would that'd definitely be the one. It feels like that was the team that was kind of overshadowing you guys coming into the season as well within the conference. Is there a point to prove there? No point to prove. Just know that this is our conference that they came into. We respect them as a really good team. Just got to protect home court. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. I think we all remember that sinking feeling after that NCAA game with the Owls. Back with the wrap in just a minute. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next Sunday night. Have a great week, everybody. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser of Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.